Bedtime with Mrs. Honeybee. Today, we'll be exploring the world of minions. We're going to meet my friends Gru and all of the little minions on our adventure. They're so excited to see you. Okay, bedtime. All you have to do is close your eyes, get cozy, and listen to the sound of my voice. Mrs. Honeybee will be your guide. Let's begin. Imagine that you are in the world of Despicable Me. Looking around, you're in the hallway of Felonius Grew's old wooden house. It's nighttime, and you feel calm here. You look in front of you, and then behind you. There are squishy yellow minions as far ahead of you, and as far behind you, as you can see. The minions have formed themselves into a great good night line to get their good night hug from Gru. You are in this line too. All the minions are making their squeaky, chattering minion noises as you all wait patiently. You take a big breath in and out because you know it's probably going to be a little while until you get your goodnight Gru hug. As you stand there excited but relaxed and patiently waiting, you hear a little commotion from the minions ahead of you. What's going on? The minions are chattering, 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 and you can't quite make out what they are saying. You tap the squishy arm of the minion right in front of you and ask what's going on. It turns around friendly, but worried, and looks at you with its one big goggled eye. The minions heard from other minions that Vector the one last mean supervillain is back from the moon. The minions who are standing behind you gasp as they listen intently. Vector, who was stuck on the moon from his evil plan to steal the moon from the world and keep it for himself, rode on an asteroid back down to Earth. This news shocks and worries the minions. They put their gloved hands up to their cheeks with mouths wide open, absolutely shocked. One of the shocked and worried minions cries out, What are we going to do? Ever since Gru's heart is filled with love from the three little girls, the world has been filled with rainbows and happiness. You stay calm because you know that love can fix and solve every problem as long as you feel it in yourself and give it to the world. You wonder how you can give love to Vector so he can then give love to the world. What are you going to do? Just then, sweet little Agnes peeks out of the sea of minions that extend far ahead of you and just as far behind you and says, Psst, hey. She waves her happy little hand at you. You wave back, excited to see her. She notices all the shock and worry from the minions, so she starts walking towards you from her place in line. Her pointy ponytail sticking up on the top of her head bop side to side as she walks. As she approaches you, she holds her arms out wide for a big hug. You hold your arms out too and give Agnes the biggest, warmest hug you have. You then let her know about Vector. Watch out for Vector. She is not as shocked and worried as the minions because she knows exactly what to do. What we need to do is give Vector the biggest, warmest goodnight hug he's ever had. She goes on to explain that he needs to feel loved. We have to show him love. So that he can give the world love. You were right. Just like you thought, Vector needs love, and this is the perfect plan to make him feel loved. 
You are happy Agnes is now with you. Agnes continues to stand in line next to you, and you wonder if you two can do this plan alone. It's always better to have help from friends, so you and Agnes decide to invite Kyle the dog and three of the most loving minions around you. Agnes calls Kyle over. Kyle, these are not treats. These are guests. Charles, this is Kyle, my dog. He is dyed pink with a big pink bow around his neck, and his big, sharp, protruding piranha teeth are in the shape of a joyful smile as he runs to Agnes. His tail with a cotton ball tuft of pink fur at the end wags as he hears and is excited about the plan. He's in. You, Agnes, and Kyle look around at the sea of minions. You all know you will definitely need their help, so you whisper to the three that are in line around you. All of them jump up and down in the air excited. Excited that they get to be your minions on this love quest. With your team formed, you continue to wait in line patiently for your good night hug and kiss. You breathe in a big, strong breath through your nose and breathe out a big, strong sigh of relief through your mouth. After you are all tucked in, you can sneak out on your quest. The goodnight hugging kiss line is moving much faster than you thought it would, and you inch up closer and closer to Gru, kneeling down to hug and kiss the minions. You step up in line, slowly but steadily. Right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. The feeling in the hallway of the old wooden house changes as you get closer to the front of the line. What's changing? Everything around you seems to twinkle. The walls are glistening as if they are smiling. All the chattering minions start to quiet down, calmed and relaxed. You feel peaceful here, patiently waiting. You look a little further down the line as you continue stepping forward, slowly, and steadily. There's a Cheeto lying on the floor. Agnes turns around with another pst. You look at her, curious. Do you see that caterpillar up there on the floor? You tilt to the side to see past all the minions, but you only see the Cheeto on the floor. You ask her if she's talking about the Cheeto. She looks back and says, no, silly, it's a caterpillar and will be a butterfly soon. You look back at the Cheeto that's still a bright orange, dusted Cheeto. You shrug your shoulders and continue waiting. Okay. As you step steadily closer, you come up to where the Cheeto is. It's right next to your foot on the rug lining the hallway. Do you see it? All of a sudden, it starts to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It looks like something's growing in there. It bursts open to reveal a happy little bright orange caterpillar with a bunch of tiny legs. You blink to make sure you're seeing what you think you're seeing. Whoa, Agnes was right. That's a caterpillar. You keep walking forward, step by step. You're almost at the front of the line. You look back to see the Cheeto caterpillar again but are surprised to see that it's gone. Were you actually imagining that? Just then you feel a flutter around your ear. You look to the side and the most stunning, brilliantly orange and white butterfly lands gently on your shoulder. It looks at you with its butterfly eyes and you blink your eyelids twice quickly. The brilliant butterfly flutters its wings twice, as if to do it back to you. That's how you give a butterfly a good night hugging kiss. The butterfly gently flies away to go to sleep now that it's filled with love. You, Agnes, Kyle the Piranha Dog, 
and the three minions are at the front of the line. It's your turn for a good night hugging kiss from Gru. You reach up your arms wide like Agnes, and he reaches his arms out from his big shoulders. You give and get the biggest, warmest goodnight hug ever and feel loved. You and your quest friends start walking back down the hallway. The walls and now the floor are glistening, twinkling like stars. You feel excited for the quest and happy that you are here. You get into the girls' room, turn out the lights, and hop into your bomb bed and cover yourself with a warm, fuzzy blanket. You all need to pretend to go to sleep so you can sneak out for your quest. You close your eyes gently just for pretend, but feel how comfortable the bomb bed is. You take a breath in and out, relaxed. When you open your eyes back up, you look around the room. It's darkened, but these walls are glistening and twinkling too. What is that? You very quietly toss blankets off you and crawl down out of the bomb bed. You walk very quietly over to one of the walls, reach out your hand and touch it with a single fingertip. Your poking finger presses into the squishy wall and seems like it can press on forever. It's so squishy. You look over at Agnes who is smiling from her bomb bed. I told you my adoptive home would be made out of gummy bears. Her two sisters giggle from their bomb bed and you look back at the gummy wall, astonished. You poke it again just to feel the fun squishiness on your poking finger. You trust Agnes's plan and are so excited. The gummy house around you has quieted to a complete silence now that all the minions have gotten their goodnight hugs and kisses. So it's time for the love quest. You, Agnes and her fluffy unicorn, Kyle, and the three minions all tiptoe out of the gummy room. Open the gummy door and quietly sneak down the glistening gummy hallway on your way to the minion lair to gather supplies. You all hop into the gigantic rhino chair with the red velvety cushion to begin the process of getting down, down, down to the minion lair. All of you squish into the one seat. The red velvety cushion feels soft as you brush against it. Kyle the pinkin' piranha dog presses a button on the arm of the chair. Gears start turning and making grinding sounds as the chair moves to the center of the living room beneath the cannon chute. The decorative wooden posts raise up with a breathy hissing sound and grab the canyon that slowly lowers it over all of you. You are now in the canyon chute, which you can see out of because it's glass, just like Gru when he gets a light bulb plan and goes down, down, down into the minion lair. It lights up bright red and you feel it slowly bringing you out to the side. The humming machinery jerks and pulls a little, as they place you all gently on the platform that will take you all down, down, down to the minion lair like a slide. You're so excited to be in the minion lair. Once you are all situated on the platform in the glass chute, the whole thing lowers with a quick jolt and you can feel your tummy drop like you're on a fun roller coaster. You go down, down, down smoothly until you reach the minion lair. And sure enough, that big room is made out of gummy bears too. The minions are all sleepy 
but still quietly cheer as you and your friends walk out of the glass tube onto the stage where Gru gives his pep talks. You look out over the lair. There's a sea of minions before you, some with one sleepy goggled eye, some with two. Agnes motioned you all to go to an old metal rickety machine that has cores and contraptions coming out of it. She holds something that looks like a little mouth out towards you. It's connected to the machine with a long cord. She says, this is a love detecting machine that reads you and makes sure you're full of love. We all have to be full of love to complete this quest. You are sure that your heart is full of love because you can feel it. She asks you to hold out your finger and she clamps the contraption down softly around your fingertip. It feels soft and squishy, just like the gummy wall. The machine shakes and lasers beam out, reading from the bottoms of your feet to the top of the head. You breathe in big and out big excited to see what it says. It beep beep beeps to signal. It's done reading and the words loved and loving appear on the screen in bright red. There's even a bright red matching heart flickering beside it. You are loved and full of love. The rest of your friends are too. So you're all ready to go. You gather some serums, gadgets, and are about to head out when you notice Agnes is standing in front of a different, bigger machine. You all go to her to see what she's doing. She set her fluffy unicorn stuffed animal down in front of the machine. What is she doing? She runs over to it and sprinkles some twinkling powder on the unicorn. You watch the dust land gently on the unicorn's fluff. Just then, the fluff starts to grow, fluffier and fluffier and fluffier. Agnes pressed a button on the machine that activated the magic dust, and now, standing beautifully before you is a huge, fluffy, real-life unicorn. It's bright white with a rainbow horn pointing out from its head. It makes horse sounds and stomps its hooves. It's ready for the mission too. You all make your way out of the minion lair while the audience of minions quietly snore asleep. In Gru's living room, you reach your hand up to open the front door and step out. Agnes and her magical unicorn, Kyle and the three minions are right behind you. The nighttime air feels good and the neighborhood is quietly sleeping. You look up to the nighttime sky as you all start walking out of Gru's yard past his massive plane car in the driveway. The moon is safely back in its spot, high up in the sky, and it's shining brightly just for you. You breathe in, feeling the cool air come in through your nose and out through your mouth. Agnes climbs up on the giant magical unicorn standing in the middle of the street in the moonlight. She reaches out her hand to help you up. She's too little to reach you, so the minions tower themselves up one by one, and you climb the minions up onto the unicorn. Then the minions scurry up. Lastly, Kyle, the pink piranha dog, jumps up wagging his little pink tail as he sits down. You're off. The unicorn is galloping through the sleepy neighborhood. Its long flowing rainbow mane is waving brilliantly in the cool nighttime air. You are enjoying this peaceful, magical ride. The unicorn comes to a galloping stop by digging its twinkling hooves into the ground. You all jump off, one by one, dusting the shiny glitter from the unicorn off your legs 
as you get back down to the ground. Still glittery, you look up and see the lit up sign for Super Silly Funland. You need to find the biggest roller coaster in the park, the one that can launch you all the way up into the fluffy nighttime clouds so you can find Vector's technological fortress and give him a good night hug and kiss. You all hop into the roller coaster cars and lower the bars snug around your laps. You take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. You are ready. You hear the machines hiss as the gears start turning, pushing the rocking roller coaster ride forward, forward, forward along the track. You hold on tightly to the bar. The roller coaster starts to go faster and faster and faster. The cool nighttime air is whooshing against your face as you start to go up, up, up the launch. The roller coaster car zooms one last zoom and whoosh. The lap bars release and you, Agnes, Kyle, and the three minions are flying through the nighttime air effortlessly from the force of the roller coaster launch. How does it feel to be able to fly so high through the stars? As you're enjoying the peaceful flight, Kyle barks and points his paw. There's Vector's fortress, shining bright white. You can see the massive fortress house, even from way up in the sky. You all float gently down and land softly next to the front fortress wall. You all look all the way up. The wall is so tall and so big that you can hardly even see the stars looking up toward the top. At the top, you see the big glowing orange V for Vector. How will you get past this? You all spread out to strategize how you will get to Vector inside his fortress house. The minions take a sip of glowing blue serum from a glass beaker they brought from Gru's lair. They each puff up squishy, bigger and bigger, as big and tall as the fortress wall. Agnes climbs up the puffed up minions like a ladder until she's standing on them as tall as the wall. Standing all the way at the top of the minions, she shouts down as quiet as she can. I can see Vector. He's in the living room, asleep. Just then, she turns back around to face the fortress house, and a punching arm shoots out of the top of the wall with a red boxing glove covering it. She ducks and hops and jumps out of the way, missing each of the punching arm's attempts to keep you loving intruders out. From the ground, you look up to see the puffed up minion ladder roll itself back a little, with Agnes walking backwards as it does to stay balanced on top. Now she is clear of the punching arm, but continues staring at it intently. The punching arm tires itself out and lays limp on top of the wall. Agnes reaches out her happy little hand and holds the once punching red boxing glove. The glove jerks suddenly, then lights up with twinkles. The punching arm now holds Agnes's hand back and Agnes smiles big. You all climb up the puffed up minion ladder and hop over the wall. Each of you shake the boxing gloved hand of the punching arm that doesn't want to punch anymore because it's filled with love. Now you just have to get into the house. The minions snicker and chatter behind you. As you look back, they reach into a bag they brought and pull out thousands of cookie robots. They all have spidery legs that scurry out and one periscope eye poking out of the top of their cookie bodies like little spider submarines. Agnes whispers, they're going to tunnel us in. 
The loving army of spidery cookie robots do just that. They dig and dig and dig, creating a tunnel that you can hop down into and walk through. The tunnel is dark, so a minion takes a sip of another serum. This one is bright green. When it does, its whole body glows neon and lights your way through the tunnel. You all follow the cookie robot slowly as they continue to dig and dig. You look down at your feet to make sure the tunnel's path is clear. Right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. You're starting to get a little sleepy, but you're determined to finish this quest with your friends. The cookie robots have tunneled all the way into Vector's fortress house, leaving a big hole in his sleek white living room floor. You all peek your heads out of the hole in the floor. You can see Vector lying on his couch in front of his big wall-to-wall -wall television. He has a video game remote in his hand still, but fast asleep. You pull yourself up out of the tunnel and are standing in Vector's high-tech living room as you wait for the rest of your friends to quietly pull themselves out too. You all tiptoe over to Vector and stand in front of him, lying on the couch. You can see his big hanging belly raise up with each snoring breath in and lower back down with each breath out. He's wearing his bright orange warm-up suit, but his glasses fell off his face and are sprawled out beside him. On the count of three, you're all going to form a giant cuddle puddle of goodnight hugs and kisses to make Vector feel loved. You count backwards from three, slowly. Three, two, one. You all wrap your loving arms around him and give his cheeks and the top of his head goodnight kisses. He wakes up slowly, surrounded by all of your love. His eyes open gently, and he looks like all of his evil washes away. You take a couple steps back. Right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. His relaxed, calm expression fades slightly as he puts on his glasses. He sternly says, I am a supervillain. His face starts to look a little angry. Agnes, with a voice full of love and cheer, replies, We love you, Vector, and you don't have to be a supervillain anymore. He holds his face puzzled for a moment. How is he going to respond? You look to Agnes who looks back at you. As you both turn back toward Vector, he smiles a big, happy, loving smile to make sure Vector is now filled with love and able to give love to the world. One of the minions pulls out the detector machine so Agnes can hook it up to his finger. Vector holds out his pointer finger and the contraption gently clamps around it. You breathe in big and out big, excited to see what it says. Done reading and the words loved and loving appear on the screen in bright red. There's even a bright red matching heart flickering beside it. You did it. Vector feels loved and is full of love to give to the world. His first act of loving kindness is to give you all matching bright orange warm-up suits. He hands out one to each of you. You reach out to take yours and it's just as warm as the love you are filled with. That must be why it's called a warm-up suit. You all put on your suits and begin to head back to your bomb beds. 
you hop up into Vector's spaceship so he can quickly get you back to Groove's. You are so sleepy. Vector pushes a bunch of beeping buttons to start the big, white spaceship. It takes off smoothly into the nighttime air. You look sleepily out of the spaceship as it floats back to Gru's house. You can hardly keep your eyes open as you pass the softly shining moon, the fluffy clouds, and the giant sky full of twinkling stars. You finally arrive. Vector drops you and your friends off, and as he does, he pinky promises you, with a little pinky's promise, that he will only give love to the world from now on. He thanks you for all your kindness, and you sneak back into the bomb bed in the gummy bedroom, and the sweet smell of gummy bear walls lulls you off to sleep. Always remember that Mrs. Honeybee believes in you. You are special and you are loved. I can't wait to see you again. <laughs>